Hi, I'm Susie. Welcome to my channel, Nail Career Education. I am celebrating Pride this year with these beauties. In my professional opinion of 30 years of doing nails, jelly tips are fast. I'm gonna show you how fast, including painting a beautiful Pride design. Let's get started. things considered, usually this time of year, I am downtown with Grant and my family and we are celebrating Pride. Usually Grant's in the parade and then we all walk behind it and then we go to our park and celebrate all day. So I'm missing it this year because it was canceled with all things considered. And I wish Grant was here to share this with because I would put these on him in a shot. But I'm going to show you how you can do it if you can't get to your salon. And if you don't have those acrylic and hard gel sculpting skills that you really kind of need to make those great nails, this is a great way to do it. And I'm going to do that with gel tips. Kira Sky has graciously sent these to me and I'm going to show you guys how easily and quickly we can put them on. So I've got three on and we are going to dive right in and I'm going to show you how you do these guys. So you're given a kit and there's tons of them in here and you just size it up. So I find with myself I'm a seven mostly through all the nails except the pinky. Like this is a seven and I believe these are sevens as well and I'll just show you. I've already buffed that one and prepared it just there. Yeah, yeah. I'm a seven. So you just grab your little sevens out of there and that's what I need for these two. And my thumb was a three. Okay, so once you get your little tips out, here's the instructions. We'll make sure that we follow those. I love this because the sculpting's already done. You don't have to do any applying except press it on. These are all numbered for you. So you don't really even have to think. Everything is set out for you and it makes it super, super easy. Okay, so I have two nails that are basically naked and I'm going to get my files. So a bunch of different stuff, like I say, including my files, I forgot to mention. I'm going to grab my fine and I'm just going to buff up the surface of both these nails. Do you hear that noise, cameraman? Cameraman's a freak for noise. Well, yeah, there's, there's definitely an error. Like, and uh, he stopped noise. now, but it was critter. Oh, is that? No, I didn't notice that. He was just grooming himself. He's... He's got a director's chair and he's off to the side now. So he's always making sure that we're doing a good job. Maybe I have to get a camera, just a critter cam. Yeah, we'll do a critter cam. <laughs> <laughs> just so we can see what he's doing. Adorable. Okay, so I'm buffing up these two nails right here. Now, when you are buffing, the idea is you're removing the shine, oil, all that kind of stuff so the product will adhere. And that's why it's very important to buff. And you do want to get every little corner because if you miss that, that could be a lifting point. Okay. Now, Kira Sky has this adorable little fluffy thing. I'm just wiping off the dust. And I'm going to size my tip now. Okay, so I have a size 7 here. And I'm just going to flip it over. And I would recommend doing the buffing of this part first, like sizing and buffing the inside before you go ahead with the primer and stuff because the dust could stick on there and interfere with any adhesion. I will recommend an e-file is better for this situation because it fits in that little crevice. So if you had a little e-file, just get a nice bit that fits in there. And all you're trying to do is rough up the area of the inside of the tip of the length of your natural nail that you're adhering it to. So if you have a shorter nail bed, you would just do a tinier little area. If you have a longer nail bed, you want to buff quite a bit of an area so it will adhere to your natural nail. Okay, and then I'm going to buff up the other guy. Okay, so those guys are ready. Okay, so I'm going to start with the prep. And the prep is basically an alcohol that cleanses the nail so that it's nice and clean for a proper adhesion. Now I'm doing these two nails together, but when I apply them, I will do one at a time, mainly because there's the little lamp. Plus you can't do them all together at the same time. <laughs> and you'll see why pretty quick. Now here is the primer. And I'm not gonna put too much of that on, I'm just gonna cover the natural nail. Okay, so now third step is the builder gel. Now we're going to use the builder gel on the natural nail. And 
we're also going to use it to apply the tip. But first, we're going to use the Builder Gel as a base that the gel can stick to. All of this is gel. The tips are gel too, that's why they call them jelly tips. Okay, so I probably shouldn't have done that first, the second one actually, I should have just done one at a time. So I'm gonna turn that on and I'm gonna cure one at a time. You wanna make sure that you do keep your finger underneath the light because it is very directional. And you might even wanna rotate the finger, it does say that in the instructions to rotate the finger a little bit because it's not all over like the dome lights, you put your whole hand in, there's lights everywhere. But this is very directional, so make sure that you have your finger sitting in the little, feel like a little, tiny little, pocket like a pothole in there for your finger to sit in and it says just 30 seconds but I did time this guy it's actually a minute but I would time that to make sure you're pretty accurate okay I'm gonna stick it in there and if you did not cure it as long as 30 seconds as they recommend in there or if you did it too short of a time frame could make it so that the product doesn't actually adhere or have any longevity too long of a time frame might be you've over cured it and you can be subject to cracking and stuff so again really important to pay attention to what the instructions are okay so that's 30 seconds right there Okay, so this is the part that requires a little bit of skill, but you don't need a ton comparison to other nails you can do. That's what I love about these. You can get them on pretty quick. Okay, so I'm going to get the Builder Gel again. And the trick with the Builder Gel is you don't want to overdo it. We want to paint that part that you just buffed up. Get the gel right to the side, but very thinly. The common mistake we make, we put too much of this stuff in here. We want it to adhere to the gel that's already on the nail. And you can just wipe off a little bit. I wouldn't do a ton because if you do too much, it's gonna end up being squished all the way to the end of your nail. Now I will say if you have flatter nails, possibly a little more gel might be required because these are quite curvy. And if you go to press it down on a flatter nail, you might have difficulty making it adhere if you don't have enough gel. Um, I don't know if that's a bit too, it might be a tad bit much. So I'm just gonna take a little bit away. It might be, as you get better at it, you'll get an idea of how much your finger needs and how you will learn that is when you snap it over the other side. I'm gonna put my little light here. Okay, so I would turn this on. You need to put it in here for about 10 seconds before you do a fuller cure. But I'm gonna turn it on because I'm gonna hold this. So I'm gonna press it into my cuticle, or near the cuticle. And then I'm going to, you can see the gel moving up the finger. You see that? Making sure no bubbles are in there. And then I'm gonna stick it under the light and I'm gonna hold the tip end of it, not with my finger over top of my nail bed or nail plate, because I really want the light to get on that specific area. I'm gonna hold it for about 10 seconds or so, and then I can release. And then I'm gonna cure it for an additional 30 seconds. And that says to rotate a little bit. If you rotate it, the light is getting all the way around. Okay, that's totally cured. So now I'm gonna do the index finger. See how quick that goes? Doesn't take long at all. We always tend to use a little too much and you see it going out the end, which is totally normal. It's no big deal, you can do that. but. Once you know how much your finger needs for each one, okay, I'm gonna turn that on. One thing I have to say, I really like this little light because I can get both of my hands in there and press in the product. Now it's pressed in, I'm gonna hold it with a tip end. I'm gonna do that for about 10 seconds. Once I feel like it's secure and down there, then I'm going to release, and then I'm gonna cure for another 30 seconds. And it says you can rotate it a little bit when it's in there. And that's making sure that the light is getting to the sides of the nail. 
See what I mean about I can go in sideways and I can hold it? When you've got a big dome light, they're big, but you can't fit both hands in there. So I do find this little light quite handy to be able to put your hands in there and hold that down, especially when you're doing it yourself, right? Well, even if someone was doing this for you, you still can't get your fingers in there. So there you go. I've got the two on there. Awesome. Okay, so now I have now got a nail on there. I've eliminated the application as in liquid and powder or building the gel and shaping and then filing to precision because, you know, you'd have to do that to get them to look this good in this shape. The only thing I'm going to have to do is just file the end, but I'll do that when I'm done. No, actually, let's do it now. So you see that little thing there? That often is all the tips you should come with that because I think that's how they're severed when they're made. So you just want to, just taking a nice fine file and just square up the end. I find they're just a little bit soft and not, they're not super straight square and I really like them super square. So I will go like that. Okay, and then I will take this file here, which is my smooth and shine file. And you do want to buff the whole tip up before you apply the gel polish. And whenever we do that, the reason why we're doing that is the same reason we buff the inside of the tip is so that the gel will adhere to it. And that's how we're gonna buff the tips up because if it's a super smooth surface, nail polish likes that. But gel doesn't so much. It's gotta have a little something it can soak into and grab onto. So we're gonna buff this up. This is an awfully smooth file. The smoother the file that you use, it does go on nice and smooth, but it might not last as long if you wanted to get a two week wear out of it. So I would use a file that's more like this. This is called my sanding sponge. It's got more of a grit to it and it will make it a little bit grittier for the polish to hang on to. So either one of those work. If you want, like I say, if you want a longer wear, you can use this one. Okay, so once you do that, again, just press them in, cured them, and you have got your nails. You don't even have to do any shaping, any sculpting. You don't even have to do any finishing. It's taken away a lot of steps. That's the beauty of the jelly tips. It comes pre-shaped for you. And this company in particular, and others who are selling them, they come in stilettos and coffins. They're really getting popular. So they're making them all sorts of different shapes now. So you don't even have to shape it, which is great. So now let's pride them up. Got all my inks laid out and all the lids are undone and you just want to I'm sort of doing it in a diagonal pattern but I'm trying to get the I mean it's definitely like a rainbow but because it's alcohol inks it's all over just be careful not to touch the skin it's if your skin's a little bit dry and sometimes it is because you've been working with the file it can make it a little dry and dusty sometimes the inks can soak right in there so if you're a little concerned put a little oil around your cuticle that could help so that inks don't soak in but I I go back and forth like I do the red and then I do the purple at the end and then I sort of work my way in between the reason why I do that is because I could make my orange next too big and then the yellow the next color too big and then the green too big and then I run out of room to make my purple <laughs> so I sort of work this way and so I got a perspective of how much room that I have to work with.
I love working with alcohol inks. They are so cool and you can get such interesting designs. When you're first working with them, it's kind of like, eh. like you'll see when I do this, you'll be like, eh. but when you keep working at it, it starts to become amazingly beautiful. And my yellow is next to my orange. And then I've got a, a light green in there. And my light green is going up against the blue. And I'm going to put this other shade of green in there. And then I might go back to my red a little. So I let it dry a little bit in between. Sometimes I get impatient and I'll blow on it too. You can totally do that. Now, do you see how I'm trying to avoid hitting my cuticle? So you can see how that little bit of, and it's drying up as I do it, that little bit of white, I really don't want that. So I'm gonna to try to get as close as I can. And sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't. So if you run into any trouble, this is what I do. So I'll have my super fine tip and I'll dip it in there. And I will just go around the cuticle to get super close just to get rid of that white. Now, because it's a fine little tip, it's not holding a lot of alcohol and the alcohol dries really quickly. Sometimes by the time you get up there, it's on the drier side. Okay, so then I'm just start, I just start to kind of go at the colors. There's a little bit too much there. Get in. just taking some off of my brush. Yeah, put too much there. I'm gonna soak it up with that. I'm just gonna dab it off. It's nice that you can do that. Yeah, you know, this stuff is foolproof. <laughs> if you make a boo-boo, you could literally just wipe this all off with alcohol and start again. It'll leave a bit of a stain, but it don't matter. It doesn't matter for the design that you're doing, but it's very, very forgiving. That's what I love about it. And there's really no right or wrong with it. No, you just keep going at it and putting it on. If you don't like, you can even take it off. Get a little more orange in there. So, oh, Cameron, I just realized something. What's that? We didn't put the back lights on, like the oh, like the that's fireplace. My fault. Yeah, it might have been my see fault. That. Oh. Okay, we have to have them on because this is pride. They have to be colorful. So, just pause for a minute. They're on. That's the magic of filming. <laughs> Thank you, cameraman. I wanted them because they're multicolored for pride. That's hence my lips. It's all a theme, mm -hmm. and my nails. On the other hand, see, I've got. Madam Glam, and I've got all these different colors. I put them on the table so I can remember to tell you all the different colors. Okay, so I'm just going to have a little fun and finish these up. With the risk of repeating myself, clear polish, gel polish makes it come alive. Look at that. Uh, honestly, that just never gets old for me. It really is pretty. Wouldn't Grant love this? Oh, I'm sure. Okay, let's check out those reveal shots. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And you know, one thing I never ever mentioned in my videos, and I think maybe I should because some of you have messaged me and said, oh, Susie, I didn't know you're putting up videos anymore. But when you, um, when you click, when you subscribe, 
you have to click that little bell, right, Karamat? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you, if you click the bell, it gives you a notification when I put my videos up. We pretty much put them up every Thursday, but if you click that little thing, it'll notify you for you, just in case you didn't know that. Okay, well, thank you for joining me, you guys, and I hope you have a great Pride Month, whatever and wherever you're celebrating it. And hopefully you can wear something like this. Again, easy nails to do. I'm an acrylic artist, but if I have to, and if I don't have my acrylic at hand, I'm putting these on. Thanks for joining me, you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,